how do you actually apply some of these findings in time in, in this kind of production? We have had the benefit of now 15 years of creating programs uh, in a field that's now 75 years old. So there's a, a, a deep uh, base of clinical practical evidence in the application of um, acoustically modified and engineered music production and how that applies to clinical outcomes uh, in areas like improving executive function, auditory processing, communication, uh, stress response, motor coordination, and higher level uh, functions as well, uh, such as planning, decision making, uh, and other uh, cognitive areas. So through our process of the clinical work and the lit reviews, we create a structured program that's built on a model of neuroplasticity. You know, in order for the brain to create meaningful change, it must be engaged in activities that are stimulating and interesting with a sufficient frequency, intensity, and duration. So when we're creating these protocols, we have to look at what's happening in the moment of the music listening experience, and then what the sequence of that experience is over time. What we're actually building are protocols that are done over the course of 40, 50, 60 hours, in the case of in time, in nine minute increments. So it's structuring an architecture uh, that has a meaningful progression within it. So within in time, we're working on two planes. We're working with rhythm and we're working on sound frequency organization. So there is a rhythmic progression that is followed with the program with various tempos, meters, and rhythmic structures, in addition to a frequency progression that follows a neurodevelopmental model. So we start with low frequency training that organizes uh, lower, more primitive brain centers, moving into training that's more related to communication, then moving into higher, higher order thinking. And then we follow a pattern of integrating those three areas and then repeat that training. So the training protocols uh, that we go through, uh, for example, within in time, are nine-minute pieces that are composed specifically based on the research that follow a very specific progression that are repeated one to four times a day, five days a week in 12-hour cycles. And a protocol will have um, a minimum cycle progression of 25 to uh, 48 hours of listening actually through that protocol. First of all, it's headphone-based listening. So somebody is using a very high-quality headphone for the sound delivery. This music is mastered very specifically and engineered for a headphone delivery. Uh, that is often done uh, through two pathways. It's through an air conduction pathway of traditional listening through headphones, but then also a vibrational input using a bone conductor uh, that actually delivers that sound through the body simultaneously so we get an integration of supporting bottom-up process and top-down processing within the brain. Uh, someone will have an iPod. Uh, on that iPod, they will have a series of playlists. Uh, they will use percussion-based music, then percussion combined with other musical uh, elements, uh, such as you'll experience here tonight. They follow different protocols based on the clinical presentation of that client. So the clinician is actually trained in protocol selection, uh, determining what the best sequence of listening may be for their client based on their presenting needs or presenting goals or problems, and then that is prescribed to that individual. Then they follow this on a one, two, or four time a day schedule five days a week over the course of a period of time. Uh, an interesting aspect that it would be great for Sheila to uh, touch on is this is also combined with very specific activity sessions that follow the listening so we have an integration of both music listening then activities that help integrate that listening once it's completed.